Welcome to Smyrna Christian Church, where the entire Word of God is taught straight from the Bible. Good evening. Welcome back to Smyrna Christian Church, back in Leviticus, picking up chapter 21, verse 16 tonight. We started learning about the priesthood some more in this chapter 21. We're going to learn some more about the priesthood today. And uh, we saw yesterday about how what would happen if a priest came in contact with a dead body <clears throat> and how the high priest was not to come in contact with any dead body at all. And uh, this the other priest, they could only come in contact with a dead body, whether it be for an immediate family member. But in, in make note of Numbers chapter 19, where you have the water of separation, and that has to do with uh, in the water of separation is the ashes of a red heifer, as well as some other ingredients. And you see there that when someone would come at, into contact with a dead body at that time, they were to be unclean for seven days. And they were to uh, use the water of separation on the third day. And then on the seventh day, they would, uh, they would be clean once again. But that's important because understand that means that if a priest did come in contact, then they'd be unclean for that seven days. They would not be able to approach the, they wouldn't be able to do their priestly duties for seven whole days. So that makes it obvious why the high priest can never come in contact with a dead body because they need to be able to do those priestly duties every day. It wasn't an option to be able to be unclean for seven days, the high priest. So that gives a little more understanding to that. So we're going to learn some more about the priesthood today and about what would make uh, animal sacrifices unacceptable. So let's get into it. Let's ask a word of wisdom from our Father. Yahweh, Heavenly Father, we thank you so much for your word. In this place you've given us, we can teach your word. We ask you to guide us through this study with your Holy Spirit. We ask you to give us eyes to see and ears to hear to understand and teach your word. We ask that your words be spoken and your will be done during this study. Thank you, and we love you so much, Father. In Yeshua, Jesus Christ's precious name, amen. So, all right, we pick it up, Leviticus chapter 21, verse 16, and it reads, And the Lord spake unto Moses, saying, Speak unto Aaron, remember Aaron's the high priest, saying, Whosoever he be of thy seed, so that's meaning the priesthood, and their generations that hath any blemish, let them not approach to offer the bread of his God. And what it means, offer the bread, it means to offer up a sacrifice on the altar of burnt offering. And remember, the priesthood, they were like the mediators between God and the people. They were the type for Jesus Christ, who is the mediator, the one mediator that we have today. As you see, I believe it's in one of the books of Timothy is where you can find that. But remember, Jesus Christ has no blemish. He has no spot. He has no sin. And with the Levitical priesthood, there, were, there was not to be any to offer on the altar that had a blemish. I mean, that was just how God made it to be. Verse 18. For whatsoever man he be that hath a blemish, he shall not approach. Once again, that means to approach to offer a sacrifice on the altar, a burnt offering. A blind man or a lame or he that hath a flat nose or anything superfluous. And superfluous means to have anything um, extra out of the ordinary, like an extra finger or an extra toe or something like that. Then a flat nose, the word is a karam in the Hebrew. In other places, it's even translated as utterly destroyed. And I think what this probably means is any type of facial deformity. Verse 19. Or a man that, that is broken footed or broken handed or crookbacked, that means hunchbacked, or a dwarf, or that hath a blemish in his eye, or be scurvy, or scabbed, or hath his stones broken. And the stones talking about the testicles, such as like a rupture or, or torsion or something like that. And a, a dwarf possibly has to do also as well as an actual dwarf has to possibly do with like a, a smaller withered hand type things like that. Verse 21, no man that hath a blemish of the seed of Aaron, the priest, shall come nigh to offer the offerings of the Lord made by fire. He hath a blemish. He shall not come nigh to offer the bread of his God. Verse 22, he shall eat the bread of his God, both of the most holy and of the holy. And like an example in 
uh, Leviticus chapter 2, verse 3, with the meat offering, the minka, which that was most holy. And uh, th they would, um, the priest, uh, part of the offering would be offered, uh, burnt up on the offering to God. But then part of the offerings would be given to the priests. And the priests, they would eat it in the holy place. Now this is interesting. So it's saying that a priest that has any of these blemishes, they can't um, offer on the altar a burnt offering, but they can eat of the portion that would be given to the priests. But you see in Leviticus chapter 2, and actually I think it really brings it out in chapter 7 of Leviticus or chapter 6, that the priests were to eat in the, most, in the, in the holy place. Inside the tent is where they were to eat it. But we're going to see here in a couple of verses, I think what it's going to be saying is that the priests that have blemishes, I think it's going to tell us what it means that they are not to go inside the tabernacle. So maybe the priests that had blemishes, they were able to eat, but they just were not able to eat it inside the tabernacle. And uh, let's go a couple more verses and we'll get to that. Verse 23, and it's the very next verse. It's this one. Only he shall not go in unto the veil, nor come nigh unto the altar, because he hath a blemish, that he profane not my sanctuaries, for I the Lord do sanctify them. They're holy. They're set apart is what it means that the Lord do sanctify them. So they, they were so sanctified that God made it to where the, even someone that had a blemish of the priesthood were not able to do these things. But we know that only the high priest could go behind the veil into the Holy of Holies, and that could only happen one time a year on the Day of Atonement like we saw back in Leviticus chapter 16. So like I said, I think this is verses saying that they can't even go into the tabernacle at all if they have a blemish, I think is what this is saying here. Verse 24, And Moses told it unto Aaron and to his sons and to all the children of Israel. Let's get into chapter 22, chapter 22, verse 1. And the Lord spake unto Moses, saying, Speak unto Aaron and to his sons, once again, that's the priesthood, that they separate themselves from the holy things of the children of Israel, and that they profane not my holy name in those things which they hollow unto me. I am the Lord. And what we're about to see is it's saying, um, separate yourself from the holy things if, um, if any of these conditions are happening that we're about to read in these few verses. If you're in an unclean, if they were in an unclean state, they could not um, deal with these holy things, and those were the, the offerings and the, the gifts that were to be offered to God. If they were in an unclean state, they could not partake of those things. They could not um, do that. Verse 3, Say ye unto them, Whosoever he be of all your seed among your generations, that goeth unto the holy things, which the children of Israel hollow unto the Lord. The hollow means to, to make it holy or to sanctify to, to dedicate to, having his uncleanliness upon him, that soul shall be cut off from my presence. I am the Lord. And so that, that's a very serious thing. That, that's the only place that it's written that it specifically says that soul shall be cut off from my presence. So God's making it clear how important this is, how serious this is. That those that were of the Levitical priesthood, you have to separate yourself from uncleanliness. And of course, today, the main thing we are to separate is from moral uncleanliness, from sin. Because all these ceremonies and rituals and animal sacrifices, those were nailed to the cross. Christ did away with those things, like you see in Colossians chapter 2, verse 14. And when it comes to someone who claims to be a preacher or a priest or a preacher or anything like that today, they better be sticking exactly to God's Word, teaching straight from the Bible exactly as it's written and remember, 1 Peter chapter 4, verse 17 says, Judgment begins at the house of God. Verse 4. What man soever of the seed of Aaron is a leper, or hath a running issue, we learned all about leprosy in a previous chapter, about 13 and 14, we learned a lot about leprosy. We learned about the running issues in chapter 15 of Leviticus. He shall not eat of the holy things, until he be clean. So in this case, that they don't even eat of the holy things if they have the running issue or a leper. Until he be clean. And whosoever toucheth anything that is unclean by the dead 
or a man whose seed goeth from him. Once again, we learned about that back in chapter 15. Or whosoever toucheth any creeping thing, whereby he may be made unclean. Learned about that back in chapter 11. How we learned about touching dead carcasses of creeping things that makes you unclean. Or a man of whom he may take uncleanliness, whatsoever uncleanliness he hath. And remember, it, it was so easy to become unclean, and sometimes even without even realizing it in this time. Um, certain situations when a person was in an unclean state, if, if you just touch them at all, you become unclean. And if they didn't wash their hands and then they touch you, you become unclean. And even in the situation where a woman would be in her state of uncleanliness, if she were to even sit on a couch and then get up and then you sit on the couch, you would be unclean. And like we talked about when we went through all that in, that in those chapters, thank God that Jesus Christ set us free from all that. But so if they would come in an unclean state, that's what this is having to do with. And many times they'd have to wash that even to become, uh, to become clean. And like I said, sometimes they wouldn't even know. So probably a good time to pretty much wash that even every day in, in that situation, in that time. And think about it today, every day is necessary to repent. Because we all sin. There's a, every day there's going to be a time that some not so good thought's going to come into your head or something. I mean, we're not perfect. We're in these flesh. Only God is perfect. Only Jesus Christ is perfect because Jesus Christ is God. So always make sure every day to repent, ask for forgiveness of your sins, and then come in that clean state to where... You're in good shape to be, receive blessings and the wisdom from Almighty God. Verse 6. The soul which hath touched any such shall be unclean until even, and shall not eat of the holy things, unless he wash his flesh with water. And today we just stay completely away from moral uncleanliness. Stay away from moral sin. And stay away from all sin. Verse 7. But once again, we all are going to fall short. Don't get on a guilt trip. Just repent. 1 John chapter 1, verse 8 through 10. Verse 7. And when the sun is down, he shall be clean, and shall afterward eat of the holy things, because it is his food. And anytime you sin, repent right away any, anyway. But especially if you're about to go into like a Bible study or something like that, you definitely want to make sure you've repented of your sins so you're in that clean state to be blessed and so God can give you the right words to share with others and so he'll pour out that wisdom on you. Verse 8. That which dieth of itself, meaning an animal just died of old age or whatever, or is torn with beasts, got killed by another animal, he shall not eat to defile himself therewith. I am the Lord. And members, you... you because at that time, it couldn't be, most likely would not be bled properly, and you're supposed to bleed the animal properly, and so forth. And plus, this is just what God said. This is how it is. Verse 9. They shall therefore keep my or, mine ordinance, lest they bear sin for it, and die therefore if they profane it. I, the Lord, do sanctify them. We've seen that a lot. I am the Lord. I, the Lord, sanctify it. God making it clear, once again, how serious this is. And once again, 1 Peter chapter 4, verse 17, judgment begins at the house of God. You better be doing things God's way. The traditions of men make the word of God of none effect. Mark chapter 7, verse 13. Verse 10. There shall no stranger eat of the holy thing. And when it says a stranger here, I think this is specifically just saying someone who is not of the, Levit of the Levitical priesthood. Someone who's not a priest. So there shall no stranger eat of the holy thing. A sojourner of the priest or an hired servant shall not eat of the holy thing. And like you see in chapter 7 how um, with certain offerings you get a partake of a, a sacrificial meal. And the, the priest would get the, a certain part. They'd get the, the, he, the wave breast and the heave shoulder. And you see, the priest would be able to partake of that, but their families would be able to take part in that sacrificial meal also. But this is saying a, a sojourner, meaning someone that's just come on a journey to see you or whatever, or a hired servant, they cannot partake of those holy things. Verse 11, But if the priest buy any soul with his money... He shall eat of it, 
and he that is born in his house, they shall eat of his meat. So even them, that it, this would be having to do with the slave. Even the slave would be able to partake of this sacrificial meal because it's like they're part of the family. And like you see in, in the book of Genesis, one that was born in the house to, as a slave, they were even to be circumcised the eighth day just like the Israelites were. And they were even made as part of the family here. They were to be treated well, and they even got to partake of this sacrificial meal. Verse 12. If the priest's daughter also be married unto a stranger, she may not eat of an offering of the holy things. And once again, I think that this is saying if she be married to anyone who's not a priest, if it be of another tribe, like such as the tribe of Judah, then, then she basically becomes a part of the tribe of Judah. So then she would not be able to partake of these holy things. Verse 13. But if the priest's daughter be a widow or divorced and have no child and is returned unto her father's house as in her youth, she shall eat of her father's meat, but there shall no stranger eat thereof. So she she'll, comes in that situation. She'd come back, basically would once again be part of the Levitical priesthood, the, which she wouldn't be a priest, but she'd be a part of that seed line of the daughters of Aaron, like was called um, Elizabeth in Luke chapter 1. But no stranger shall eat thereof, it says, verse 14. Once again, I think that means someone who's of just not of the Levitical priest line. Verse, four, uh, verse 14. And if a man eat of the holy thing unwittingly, that's, that Hebrew was translated as a sin through ignorance back in verse 4 and 5, meaning that they didn't realize it, they didn't do it on purpose. So if a man eat of the holy things unwittingly, then he shall put the fifth part thereof unto it and shall give it unto the priest with the holy thing. And whether maybe they just saw it sitting around or something and then they, they didn't realize that it was holy, dedicated unto the Lord, and they partook of it. God, God's not cruel. You know, he knew it was an accident. It's not going to be some super harsh penalty, but they would have to do what it says here, give unto the priest with the holy thing and the fifth part, the 20%. Verse 15, And they shall not profane the holy things of the children of Israel, which they offer unto the Lord. Once again, this is a very important, very serious thing. Verse 16, Or suffer them to bear the iniquity of trespass when they eat their holy things. For I, the Lord, do sanctify them. The priests better be doing it God's way. And someone who's not a priest, they better not try to do the things only a priest can do. Don't ever forget Numbers chapter 16 when Korah, he was of the tribe of Levi, but he was not of the Levitical priesthood line. And then he went, him and some others went to Moses and Aaron and said, oh, you take too much upon yourself. And see, they wanted to be the priests. They're basically trying to overtake Moses and Aaron. Moses said, all right, come back tomorrow with your censors. We'll see whose side God's on. What ended up happening, long story short, God opened up the earth and swallowed a whole bunch of them. Just killed them right there. Want to go against God's anointed? That's a huge mistake. And you want to try to play the role of a priest when God didn't send you to be one? You're going to have big problems. And once again, if you claim to be of the cloth, you better be studying diligently and teaching the word straight out of the Bible exactly as it's written. Verse 17. And the Lord spake unto Moses, saying, Speak unto Aaron and to his sons, and unto all the children of Israel. So now we're switching gears a little bit. What we're about to read not only has to do with the priesthood, but has to do with all those of Israel. And say unto them, Whatsoever he be of the house of Israel, or of the strangers in Israel, meaning even someone of, of another race, if they're still living among them, that will offer his oblation for all his vows and for all his free will offerings, like we read back in chapter 7, verse 16 of Leviticus, which they will offer unto the Lord for a burnt offering. You shall offer at your own will a male without blemish of the beeves, that's cattle, of the sheep, or of the goats. Of course, all sacrificed animals had to be clean animals. We learned what's clean and what's unclean back in Leviticus chapter 11, verse 20. But whatsoever hath a blemish, that shall ye not offer, for it shall not be acceptable for you. 
And just as Jesus Christ is the high priest today, like we learn all throughout the book of Hebrews, he was, he's that sacrifice. He became the sacrifice once for all. And that's also Hebrews, uh, Hebrews chapter 10, verse 10, I believe it is. So he became the sacrifice. Jesus Christ had no blemish. He had no sin. And like we've seen all throughout this book of Leviticus, these animal sacrifices were types. They would have no blemish because they were teaching us about Jesus Christ, the one who had no blemish. Remember Galatians chapter 3, verse 24, the law is the schoolmaster to bring us to Christ. Verse 20, But whatsoever hath a blemish, that shall ye not offer, for it shall not be acceptable for you. And whosoever offereth the sacrifice of peace offerings <clears throat> excuse me, unto the Lord to accomplish his vow, or a free will offering in beeves or sheep, it shall be perfect to be accepted. There shall be no blemish therein. And you don't cut corners. You do it how God said to do it. Verse 22. Blind or broken or maimed or having a win, a win is running sores or scurvy or scab. Scabbed possibly has to do with like scurf or tetter or ringworm. You shall not offer these unto the Lord, nor make an offering by fire of them upon the altar unto the Lord. You don't do it. Remember when Christ went in and he overthrew the uh, tables and the money changers, and also they were selling doves. They were making it in a house of merchandise, which many churches do today. They buy and sell in the church. When God said, don't do that. Don't make it a house of merchandise. You made it a den of thieves. And all those doves they were buying and selling, do you think they were perfect without blemish like they were supposed to be? Highly doubtful that all of them were. And so Christ, he went over, he overthrew the tables of the money changers. He does not like it. And this is also, we have this directly um, mentioned basically to us in the book of Malachi chapter 1. I want to go and I want to read a few, a few verses there. We're going to go Malachi, that's the last book of the Old Testament, right before the book of Matthew. We've got Malachi chapter 1. I've got my notes in here still. Malachi chapter 1, picking it up, verse 6. And it reads, A son honoreth his father, and a servant his master. If then I be a father, where is mine honor? God, this is God speaking. He's saying, you honor your, your human father. You honor your, your, uh, your master, your boss. But you're not going to honor me, the God, that, the only God, the one who uh, created your very soul, the one that blesses you, the one that created the heaven and the earth. If I then be a father, where is mine honor? And if I be a master, where is my fear? Saith the Lord of hosts unto you, O priests, that despise my name. And you say, wherein have we despised thy name? Verse 7, you offer polluted bread upon the altar and just put for any sacrifices. Exactly what we're reading in the book of Leviticus. You cut corners. Offer these animals with blemish that God said you don't offer to me. And you say, wherein have we polluted thee? And that you say, the table of the Lord is contemptible. Verse 8, and if ye offer the blind for sacrifice, is it not evil? And if ye offer the lame and the sick, is it not evil? Offer it now unto thy governor. Will he be pleased with thee? Or accept thy person, saith the Lord of hosts? God saying, you know if you were to give the governor one of these sickly animals, he wouldn't be happy about it. How much more is God not going to be happy about it? Verse 9, and now I pray you, beseech God that he will be gracious unto us. This hath been by your means. Will he regard your person, saith the Lord of hosts? Who is there even among you that would shut the doors for naught? Neither do you kindle fire on mine altar for naught. I have no pleasure in you, saith the Lord of hosts. Neither will I accept an offering at your hand. You understand what this is saying, that you won't even shut the doors or not or kindle a fire on the altar? Saying you wouldn't even do that for free. Every single thing you do for the church, you want money for it. Once again, the, the many churches today are become a den of thieves. You think God doesn't know? God knows. 
Many preachers, they might make merchandise out of their congregation. Make note of 2 Peter chapter 1 or 2 Peter chapter 2 verses 1 through 3. They might be getting over ripping off their congregation, but woe unto them because God sees it all. And boy, are they going to pay. Won't do anything for free. Won't do anything without passing a play, without guilt tripping their congregation. Unthinkable. But many people, they just go week after week, day after day, and they get ripped off. It's not acceptable to God. They cut corners. They do all types of stuff that's super religious, but they don't teach God's Word. So guess what that's like? That's like a sickly animal. That's not a real sacrifice. That's a false sacrifice. That's a sickly sacrifice. Verse 11, for from the rising of the sun, even unto the going down of the same, my name shall be great among the Gentiles. And in every place incense shall be offered unto my name, and a pure offering. For my name shall be great among the heathen, saith the Lord of hosts. Salvation is for whomsoever will. Verse 12, but ye have profaned it, and that ye say, the table of the Lord is polluted. And the fruit thereof, even his meat, is contemptible. You said also, behold, what a weariness is it. That, that's what some people say, oh, it's so hard to be a Christian. That's a lie. Do you remember what it says in 1 John chapter 5, verse 3? It says, for this is the love of God, that we keep his commandments. And his commandments are not grievous. It's not hard. All these moral laws that we've learned in Leviticus... Is it hard to do? Is it hard to not sacrifice your children through fire to a false god? Is it hard to not partake in perverse, lustfulness, unnatural ways? I mean, no, those things aren't hard. Serving God is, it, it's easy. It's truly a fact. It's easy to serve God. Because all you got to do is do what he says to do. And yeah, your flesh is going to tug at you sometimes. You're going to have some, some not-so-good thoughts at times. You're going to have some times you're tempted. And sometimes we're going to sin. But just, just repent. And because of that blood of Jesus Christ, your sin's washed away as if it never even existed. But it's not hard to be a Christian. It's not weariness to serve God. It's not weariness to study His Word to where you learn how to be blessed. And we're going to see when we get to Leviticus chapter 26, the blessings God brings on those who serve him and the wrath that he's going to bring on those who go against him. Continuing 13. And ye have snuffed at it, saith the Lord of hosts. And he brought that which was torn and the lame and the sick. Thus ye brought an offering. Should I accept this of your hand, saith the Lord? But cursed be the deceiver which hath, which hath in his flock a male and voweth and sacrifice unto the Lord a corrupt thing. I, for I am a great king, saith the Lord of hosts, and my name is dreadful among the heathen. Blessings come to those who serve God, but wrath come to those who don't. And that, what, what this is saying, cursed be the deceiver, is saying, he, he, he's got a, a good animal, perfect without no blemish. And then he, a person vows to, to make a sacrifice, but he doesn't want to give the good one. He just gives a, a, a sickly one. I mean, that is so wrong. And once again, it's the equivalent to preachers today claiming to be of the cloth, claiming to be men of God. But then they go, you go to their church service and the word of God is not taught there. God's against it. And boy, are they going to pay. Judgment begins at the house of God. Let's go back. Let's finish this chapter 22 of Leviticus. Pink it back up. Leviticus chapter 22. Leviticus chapter 22, verse 13. I'm, I'm, or 12, 22, I think, is where we're at. I'll read 22. I might have read that, but I'll read it again just in case. Verse 22. Blind or broken or maimed or having a wind. Yeah, we read this, but I'll read it again. Or scurvy or scabbed. You shall not offer these unto the Lord, nor make an offering by fire of them upon the altar unto the Lord. Verse 23, either a bullock or a lamb that hath any super, superfluous or lacking in his parts. Once again, that means like having too many fingers or too many toes or lacking, meaning having less than, than the natural. That, that mayest thou offer for a free will offering. But for a vow it shall not be accepted. And remember we read about the vow and the free will offering back in a previous chapter. Verse 24. You shall not offer unto the Lord that which is bruised 
or crushed or broken or cut, neither shall you make any offering thereof in your land. Now this has to do with uh, castration of animals. Saying you don't offer any animal that's castrated as an offering in any type of way. But did you notice how that little part at the end, any offering thereof is in italics? That means it's not in the manuscripts. So what this actually says, this last part, neither shall ye make in your land. This is saying not only do you not sacrifice animals with uh, castrated animals, it's saying you don't castrate animals at all. God made the animals how He wanted them. You don't go against God's natural way of things. Verse 25. Neither from a stranger's hand shall ye offer the bread of your God of any of these. So it, it, whether, it be a pre, or whether it be an Israelite or someone that's of another people, that they abide by the same rules. You don't offer sickly, diseased um, animals. Because their corruption is in them. Speaking of the animals. Speaking of the ones that are sickly or diseased. And blemishes be in them. They shall not be accepted for you. And the Lord spake unto Moses, saying, verse 27, When a bullock or a sheep or a goat is brought forth, then it shall be seven days under the dam. That, that's under the mother is what the dam is, like nursing. And from the eighth day and thenceforth, it shall be accepted for an offering made by fire unto the Lord. But you understand God loves His animals. God's teaching us here, give the mother and the child that time. Give them that seven days. You don't just take an animal as soon as it's born and sacrifice it. You give the mother and, and the, the child, if you want to call it that way, the animal, you give them that time together. And you remember what it even says in Exodus chapter 23, verse 19? You don't see the kid in his mother's milk. Why? Because that's like a slap in the face to the animal. God loves his animals and we're supposed to treat animals very well. Of course, yes, we have power over the animals like you see in the book of Genesis. God gave us the animals to, to hunt and to fish and, and to eat. And at this time, they were to be sacrificed, uh, uh, sacrificed. But you don't treat them cruelly. Never be cruel to an animal ever. God loves his animals. Verse 28. And whether it be cow or you, you shall not kill it and her young both in one day. And you might, there's a similar thing to this in Deuteronomy chapter 22, verse 6 and 7, when it's even referring to birds. Verse 29. And when you will offer a sacrifice of thanksgiving unto the Lord, offer it at your own will. On the same day it shall be eaten up. You shall leave none of it until the morrow. I am the Lord. And we went into a great deal on this back in Leviticus chapter 7, verses 12 through 15. Verse 31. Therefore shall ye keep my commandments and do them. I am the Lord. Never forget James chapter 1, verse 22. It says, if you just hear, but you don't do, then you deceive yourself. And remember Luke chapter 6, that whole chapter is amazing, first of all. But I'm going to mention Luke chapter 6, verse 46. It says, why call ye me Lord, Lord, and do not the things which I say? I mean, you claim to love God. You claim to be a Christian, but if you never study God's Word, you don't even know how to be pleasing to God, let alone to do those things. Verse 32, Neither shall ye profane my holy name, but I will be hallowed among the children of Israel. I am the Lord which hollow you. Once again, hollow means to, to set apart, to sanctify, to make clean, to make holy. Verse 33, to complete, that brought you out of the land of Egypt to be your God. I am the Lord. Lord in all caps, that's Yahweh, the sacred name of our Heavenly Father. He said, I brought you out of Egypt. I set you free from the cruel rigor that the Egyptians were putting on you. And Jesus Christ does set you free today. Whether you're having trouble with addiction or some type of lust or some type of perverseness or anything like that, call out to God. Ask for forgiveness. And if you sincerely repent, those sins are washed away like they never existed. And then you've got to do the work. You've got to set yourself to try to do what's right. Separate yourself from bad situations that would tempt you. Separate yourself from people that would tempt you. But if you do the work, and then you call out to God, and you ask Him for help, 
Jesus Christ truly sets you free. In the next chapter, in the next chapter, we will learn about the feast days. A lot of fantastic things to learn there. Let's go to our Father's throne. Yahweh, Heavenly Father, we thank you so much for your word in this place you've given us. We can teach your word. And we just ask you to continue to give us understanding, not just for ourselves, but so we can share it with others. Thank you, and we love you so much, Father. In Yeshua, Jesus Christ's precious name, amen. This was recorded in the year 2023 at Smyrna Christian Church in Kokomo, Indiana by Pastor Jesse Sisk. God bless.